Stick around for Dave and his guests, Howard Stern, John Mellencamp, and Kate Nelligan, tonight on The Late Show with David Letterman. Now, your local news. Next on New at 11, lawmakers are close to closing the deal on the budget. What does it mean for your tax dollars? Christopher Reeve's mom talks publicly for the first time about her son's condition. And wait till you hear what happens when this knife-wielding monkey goes bananas. Next. Now, live, you're watching News Center 6. New at 11. Good evening, everyone. Jack has the night off. New at 11, you've heard it before, but tonight lawmakers say it's for real. The budget is an unofficial done deal. So with that said, the real question is, what does it mean for you? Darcy Wells knows, and she's live at the Capitol. Darcy? Well, Joanne, it means a tax cut, higher college tuition, and a crackdown on welfare recipients. The total package, $63 billion. This is a slow and painful process, but the legislative leaders responsible for this compromise package say it was well worth the wait. No, I think this budget is a tremendous, tremendous breakthrough for the people of New York State. We're going to have less state spending in the general fund for the first time since before I was born. You're going to see welfare reform, which is overdue in the state, Medicaid reform. You're going to see a tax cut package that's going to stimulate the economy and create jobs. Uh, money is restored to education, higher and secondary. There are no uh, losers, per se. We had a painful budget process. Uh, we shared the pain. So what does it mean to all of us? Well, here are some of the highlights. We'll see an income tax cut spread out over three years. For about two-thirds of us, it should mean a 25% reduction when it's all said and done. Students will pay more for education at state public universities to the tune of $750 a year. There are changes coming for welfare recipients. All recipients will be putting their fingerprints on file to prevent fraud. The Learn Fair program will cut benefits for recipients whose children miss school. And Work Fair programs will make welfare recipients work or lose benefits. Now, the governor said tonight he's making sure all the language on the budget bills is correct and that he expects a uh, spending plan to be adopted within the next day or two. Joanne? Great. We've all been waiting a long time for this. Thank very you long. very much. Darcy Wells reporting live from Albany. There are some contract troubles for a state union, and a lot of local jobs are on the line in one city. For that, let's go to Ed O'Brien. He's in the Sky Center. Ed, what's happening tonight? Well, Joanne, first of all, here's something that might affect that state budget, or at least one portion of it. The members of Council 82, that's the prison guards union have rejected a tentative contract that would have given them a seven percent raise over the course of the next four years the vote was four to one against it union bargainers will meet and plot their strategy tomorrow in glens falls meantime hundreds of jobs are going to be lost because of the merger of two insurance companies cna in glens falls will lose about 420 jobs over the next three years those folks will be offered jobs but in other cities the cuts will leave only 100 still working in the glens falls office when they're all done no job reductions are expected in glens falls before january joanne christopher reeves mother says tonight she's hoping for improvement in her son's condition but she's trying to be realistic i think the only area that there might be some improvement is or, or some is in this whole space of the breathing i i don't think Chris is going to regain much, if anything, in terms of um, um, uh, other uh, abilities, uh, the paralysis. Um, that's a nerve function, and nerves, I guess, don't regenerate. Reeve remains in serious but stable condition, paralyzed and not breathing on his own. He was thrown from a horse last weekend. He was wearing a helmet. Ironically, Reeve was soon to be on a poster promoting safe horseback riding. Questions and some answers tonight about a fatal plane crash that claimed the lives of two local people. This is all that's left of the Cessna 210 that Ray Garbachewski was flying from Burlington to Hudson last night. The plane went down on Hogback Mountain in Starksboro, Vermont, shortly after takeoff. The crash killed the Hudson man and his passenger, 34-year-old Kimberly Burian of Albany. Uh, it's not that high a mountain range that should have been easy to clear. The weather seemed to be fine. Obviously, there could have been some mechanical problems, and that's what the FAA will look into when they arrive. Investigators at the scene now think the plane may have been low on fuel or may have run out of fuel. The devastation of this week's tornado is being felt all the way in Hollywood tonight. That's because the twister ripped apart part of pop singer Mariah Carey's large property in Hillsdale. Sections of roof were sheared right off the barn and the caretaker's house. Mariah was there surveying the damage yesterday. The scene is the same all over the county. Workmen trying to clear down trees and clean up debris. It can seem like a never-ending task. 
I've been working on the place for days now, and it seems like nothing has been really accomplished. You know, it's just that, that much devastation, and especially the caretaker's house, one of the barns. Um, all the trees have pretty much been level in the whole place. In Great Barrington, where damage is estimated to be about $25 million, the word tonight is stay away. City officials say anyone considering taking a drive to the Berkshires this weekend to check out the damage would only be getting in the way. Meantime, the Red Cross is there for not only local residents, but for the men and women working around the clock to clean the littered landscape. It's been going pretty good. We've uh, helped a lot of people. We've we'll been around here all day. We were on later on with sandwiches, and last night we were out from 9 o'clock last night serving hot meals. Red Cross, lifesaver for you guys? They sure are. They sure are. A lot of good people around here. Thank you very much. The Red Cross has set up a new service center at St. Peter's Youth Center in Great Barrington, providing food, clothing, and shelter for anyone who needs it. You know, all that assistance takes money, and that's where you come in. We've made it easy for you through Tornado, a fundraising effort by New Center 6, Radio 10, Radio 810, WGY, and the Red Cross. All you have to do is stop by the Center of Colony Center tomorrow and drop off a donation. Or for credit card donations, you can call 1-800-HELP-NOW. Well, it looked cute, just a helpless stray monkey. So some kids brought it home, and that's where the horror begins. This is the monkey moments after it went on a rampage inside this Altoona, Pennsylvania house, chasing everyone inside out. The homeowner says the animal went bananas when it saw a uniformed police officer. Went to the kitchen sink and got a paring knife out of the, the drain board and was running around stabbing things. Then it sat there and found a lighter laying there and started flicking the lighter. Opened a bottle of Pepsi, drank some Pepsi, and just got into every food it could find. Marshmallows, brown sugar, it was into everything. As you can see, animal control officers tranquilized the monkey and took it away. No word on who the owner is. From a sick crime in Saginaw to America's new champion, Speller. There's more news happening tonight, new at 11. An 18-month-old baby is found in a microwave, the power on. Tonight, detectives in Saginaw, Michigan, are trying to figure out who put the infant there. The baby's father called rescue workers. The baby suffered internal injuries and is in fair condition. This 15-year-old deaf girl tonight is in the custody of her interpreter. The girl wanted to leave her parents because she says that neither of her parents had bothered to learn sign language. Late today, a judge ruled in her favor. Rescuers find a miracle in this rubble in Far East Asia. Five days after an earthquake leveled this town, an eight-year-old boy is dug out of the ruins of his home. He's alive. 620 people died in the quake, and the death toll could rise to 2,000. An Alabama high school is torched 10 months ago, and tonight police say this is the man who set the blaze. He's the son of a black protest leader. The school was the focus of racial tension after the principal threatened to cancel the prom if interracial couples attended. If you're stuck on Marilyn Monroe, this is for you. The Postal Service unveiled the new stamp this morning. The ceremony comes on what would have been Monroe's 69th birthday. The stamp is the first in what is to be a series on Legends of Hollywood. X-A-N-T-H-O-S-I-S. -S. That's it! <laughs> and with that said, tonight, 14-year-old Justin Tyler Carroll is the 1995 National Spelling Bee champ. The Memphis, Tennessee teen credits determination and optimism for winning him the title. Well, I couldn't spell that word, but I can spell weekend. We want to find out what the weather is going to look like for the weekend. Here's Kelly Boland with our first forecast. Kelly? Joanne, can you spell, spell humid? Yes. <laughs> F-L-A-T. I know my hair's going to take a beating tomorrow. The humidity is on the increase. The clouds have also moved in, and that does mean some showers and perhaps even a few thunderstorms tomorrow. 67 degrees at 8 a.m., perhaps a few sprinkles, 74 by noon. And we'll see highs in the mid to upper 70s, but it will feel a lot warmer with that humidity. And it looks like those showers will continue at least into the first part of the weekend. I'll have more on that forecast for you a little bit later. I love what it does to the hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Coming up, it doesn't look like much, but a little speck can inflict you with some life-threatening diseases. We'll tell you about the new dangers with deer ticks when we come back. See it tonight, use it tomorrow. More news next with Jack Arnicky and Joanne Burton, only on News Center 6, New at 11. Deer ticks, they're prevalent in many summer vacation spots, as well as some of our backyards. They've always instilled fear of Lyme disease, but tonight there's new word that one bite from the tiny insect can be deadly for other reasons. 
It's an old enemy with new weapons. Until now, a tick bite meant the possibility of getting Lyme disease. Researchers now believe those nasty little bugs are capable of transmitting at least two other infections, ehrlichiosis, which is often fatal in dogs, and babesiosis, a rare but sometimes fatal infection in humans. There's not a lot of experience in the general medical community with these particular infections, but some of them can be severe. Our doctor on call, Dr. Mark Goldendorf, says what's new is that many people who already have Lyme disease are turning up with evidence that they also have the other two bacteria. The ticks are common in wood-lined areas, and unfortunately for many of us, that poses a danger as we head to the outdoors for our summer vacations. Another drawback is that the ticks are not obvious. They don't hurt when they bite, but they attach themselves. And as they suck the blood out, they'll get larger and you will be able to see them. But they don't hurt, so you have to look and find them. So maybe it is time to take a few more precautions. Fortunately, it takes up to 24 hours after a tick bite for the diseases to settle in. So looking for ticks on your body immediately after leaving wooded areas is essential. All three diseases can usually be treated successfully with large doses of antibiotics best precaution for all of you wear long clothing that you can tuck in if you're going outside during the summertime tuck it in always and then always check yourself over very carefully we can't say that enough you may want to think about this the next time you drink a glass of water tonight the environmental protection agency says one-fifth of americans drink seriously polluted tap water that's the finding of two new studies new york city tops the list for most people affected by bad water closest to here utica was also cited for dirty tap water Right now, Ed O'Brien's in the Sky Center looking at the news wires. Let's go to him to see what else is happening tonight. Ed? Joanne, more tonight on that intruder who was shot at Madonna's house a couple of nights ago. His name is Robert Dewey Hoskins. First of all, he entered innocent pleas today to charges of stalking the singer and threatening to slit her throat. Turns out now that he also tried to gain access to the grounds back on April the 8th. That time, a security guard says Hoskins said he was either going to marry Madonna or slit her throat. Madonna wasn't home that time either. Joanne? Thanks, Ed. Kelly Bolin returns with a closer look at our weather when we come back, and then Ed O'Brien will give you a fast-forward look ahead at tomorrow, Friday. Stay with us. There's news happening now in your neighborhood. See it next from the Sky Center, only on New Center 6, New at 11. It's a beautiful first day of June. Temperatures once again above normal, 84 degrees, the official high. And, you know, it was a great night for ice cream as well. We had temperatures in the 60s to lower 70s, and here we have some kids enjoying some of the stuff in Colony. Soft ice cream, regular ice cream, sprinkles, some without. Just a perfect night to enjoy the stuff. And it looks like tomorrow will also be a very nice day, although it will be a little more humid. And uh, we also have some showers and storms on the way. But, hey, I like ice cream anytime. Let's check out what we have right now at the airport. Mostly cloudy skies, still very mild outside with 72 degrees. The dew point is at 52, so the humidity is on the rise. Winds are out of the south, 13 miles per hour, and the barometer is rising for now anyway. Look at other temperatures across the northeast. Most of us are in the upper 60s to the lower 70s. In fact, Burlington up, uh, today got up to a record high of 88 degrees. They're now down to 68, 63 at Glens Falls, 70 at Poughkeepsie, 68 down in the city, 69 at Rochester, and currently 63 degrees in Buffalo. Just about all of us under mostly cloudy skies, except for extreme eastern New England. But even places like Boston and Cape Cod will soon see the clouds as the night progresses and into tomorrow morning, and that does mean some scattered showers and some thunderstorms are on the way, especially by the afternoon. As far as the clouds go, well, the satellite picture is coming up. There it is. We had beautiful sunny skies for most of the day, but then the clouds increased and thickened as the day went on, and the clouds will continue to be with us not only for tomorrow, but for the first half of the weekend, and then it looks like these clouds will clear on out of here by Sunday. So if you're making plans this weekend, it looks like Sunday will be the better day to make those outdoor plans. Forecast map for tomorrow shows those scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the area in the northeast. Not a total washout, though, just some on and off showers, maybe a thunderstorm in the afternoon, but the big story will be the humidity, which will definitely be on the increase. Here's the forecast now for overnight tonight, increasing clouds and mild, with lows only falling to 60, perhaps even just below to mid-60s. Winds will be from the south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then for tomorrow, looking for mostly cloudy skies, it will be a little more humid than today, with highs near 77 degrees. Also keep that umbrella handy for those scattered showers and thunderstorms. And then for tomorrow night, still some showers around. It will be muggy with overnight 
overnight lows down to 62 degrees. And as we look ahead to the first part of the weekend, highs will be near 75 on Saturday with more showers, maybe even a thunderstorm that day as well. Here's the extended forecast for Sunday. Looks much better. 75 for the high with partly sunny skies. Monday also looks quite nice with lots of sunshine, a high of 78. Tuesday, we have our next chance for showers with highs in the mid to upper 70s. Ed? Thank you, Kelly. Time for a fast forward look ahead now to Friday. Let's begin with tomorrow morning's newspaper headlines in the Gazette. The three candidates for mayor in the city of Schenectady vow they won't use the city's money woes in the campaign. The city is looking at spending cuts because they're facing a deficit. Otherwise, those candidates agree they won't fight over the money problems. In the record, a freshman student at SUNY Cortland is suing the school. That's of interest because he is from Grafton, and last fall he suffered kidney damage after being hazed by a fraternity there. The Saratogian word that a race course in Kentucky is applying for racing dates in July of 1996. That could overlap with the first week of racing at the Saratoga race course, but nothing has been approved yet. They've only applied for those dates. A couple of problem spots you might want to avoid on the roads as you make your way around town tomorrow. Neither one of them will affect the morning rush hour, though. First of all, in Rensselaer County, Route 43 will be down to a single alternating lane between Mealer and Cobb Hill Road. That begins at 9 in the morning. If you're heading north on the north way tomorrow in Saratoga County, they're doing some work there, and you'll be losing a lane northbound near exit 16 under the Ballard Road Bridge. That'll be from 8 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. Don't forget we update traffic and weather together beginning at 6 a.m. live. We'll see you tomorrow morning on News Center 6 First News. Joanne? All right, thank you, Ed. It's lottery time. Let's take a look at tonight's winning lottery numbers. The daily number, 1, 2, 3. Simple one. Win 4, 0, 4, 4, 8. Good luck. Oh! Up next on your sports slate, Yankees lose a key player, Firebirds gain one. All this on the eve of fight night, Joel Scott gets ready to put on the gloves after this. Stay with us. Stay right there. Rick Renner's coming at you with sports, only on New Center 6, New at 11. New Center 6 Sports is sponsored by Pella. We've certainly heard a whole lot about Joel Scott, and now everyone in the area is get a getting a chance to see him tomorrow night, if you so desire. That's why there's plenty of tickets available. <laughs> I'm getting excited about it. I think I you are. You, one right now. you know why? <laughs> You'd win, okay? Because you know what time it is right now, don't you? <laughs> I think so. Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. That's what time it is. Hope you enjoy that at home. Tomorrow night, it's fight night right here in Capital Land. That's right, at the Starlight. Brought to you by the good people at Del Gallo Promotions. The Beast from the East, Joel Scott, back in the ring. He should be the king of the ring. Joel weighed in at a very trim 226 pounds this afternoon. Originally scheduled to fight Rochester's Bryant Smith, but Smith bowed out because of a back injury, or maybe he was just too darn scared. So Joel will do battle with Saratoga's Mike Robinson. Should be a good fight. Robinson has been in the ring with Tommy Morrison and Riddick Bowe, and a former Joel sparring partner that's very active and may give him some work. I don't know what we're going to do with ourselves here. Well, I feel normal. Huh? They're ready to get this fight over with. The butterflies just came today. <laughs> no butterflies until this morning. So what, what is your prediction for Friday night? I never have no prediction. Just win. Try to win. So I hear the sirens. Maybe that might be the ambulance for your guy you're fighting. <laughs> yeah? No, I don't know. <laughs> A whole host of locals on the card, including the number eight ranked junior middleweight in the world, Tony Marshall. T recently missed two world title tries, but he's more than ready to get back into the mix. Today, I wake up thinking about boxing. You know, working out in the gym is like a job to me. That's why I come to work every day. What do you know about this guy you're fighting? Uh, nothing. Basically, <laughs> nothing. All I know that he's going to be knocked out very <laughs> well, there you have it. On to baseball now. Tough news for the New York Yankees. PK is on the DL. Second baseman Pat Kelly is sidelined for four to six weeks surgery on his wrist. And out of the place okay, around Major friends. League Baseball. Hey, what do you know? Kelly moonlighting before the games. All right. Strangest windup in delivery. Montreal's Carlos Perez. Check that stuff out. Hey, it, it works. Keep doing it. And finally, Kirby Puckett on his horse. Slim pickings tonight. <laughs> but what do you want for free? All right, score tallies tonight. Cleveland bites Chicago. Texas all over the Twinkies in the seventh. National League, Philly spanks Chicago. Montreal pitcher Carlos Perez. He's a guy with that funky windup. He's now 5-0. Oh. La La Land, boys. 
Well, they roll. Eric Caros extends his hitting streak to 16 games, and Pittsburgh ends the major league's longest win streak since he won nine in a row coming in. Let's go to Heritage Park and a capacity crowd on hand. <laughs> Hoosick Falls in Hudson, play of the night. Get a load of this. Number to third, back to home. Wayne Williams turns the impossible double play. That's what I call Wayne's world. But Hoosick Falls gets the last laugh, winning three to one. To Nicker Backer Field and the girls class C final. Saratoga's Amy Ward was warding off Boreesville early, but not enough as Vville spanks. Spot Catholic for the Class C title. In Class Double C, brought Alvin Perth down Hoosick Falls 3-2 for the title there. Let's go to the white sheet in Motown. Game one of the Western Conference Finals, Chicago and in the Adirondack, Papa. Red Wings, both teams were like octopuses tonight. We pick it up in overtime, tied at one. It was a bright one. It was real bright for Nicholas Lindstrom. Oh, he shoots, he scores, and for the first time since 1960, the Red Wings win an overtime game in the playoffs. The Wings take game one, two to one the final there. Game six of the Western Conference Finals in the NBA, and the Houston Rockets are doing something real strange, putting a home team on the winning tally. It's late in the fourth, they're in control, they can wrap up this series. The away team has won every game coming in. On to Pigskin now, and the Albany Firebirds who are back at the next Saturday against Connecticut. And get this, with a new quarterback, Old Face. Mike Perez isn't going anywhere. He's still the man. But the Birds add an original, Air McNair, as in Fred Air McNair, the older brother of the Heisman Trophy candidate. Perhaps you remember Hare McNair backing up Perez last year. Today the Birds re-sign him, and it's an added gun as the Birds look to reload after a slow start. But uh, last week we had a bye week. Uh, these guys worked extremely hard. It's like a new start for us, a new season. Uh, we've got some new faces in this week, and uh, I, I think our guys are ready to play some football. On to tennis on the French Open in Paris. Rain again, the big winner today. Many still advanced through round number two, including defending champs Sergey Bruguera and Arantxa Sanchez, Vicario, John Cougar, Mellencamp. Other notables advancing. Boris Becker shown here, Todd Martin, Michael Chang, and Michael Stieck who knocked out Stefan Edberg. Sports short, six weeks off the PGA Tour, and Greg Norman is back in the lead of the Memorial. Not bad, Colonial uh, Colony, rather. Athletic Club fitness manager Ned Norton will be in this week's Sports Illustrated as a hometown hero for his commitment to kids and the disabled. Congratulations to him. Siena assistant coach Steve Clifford leaves the Saints for a main gig at Adelphi. LPGA Olds in East Lansing, Michigan. Saratoga's Donnie Mockery shoots par. She's nine off the lead in round number one. And finally, one from the weird, the wild, the wacky, and the wonderful file. There it is, Julie Inkster from the beach. Just the way Joanne does it. I heard you did that the other day, getting ready for the Skins game. Yeah, not a little really. later in the summer, huh? <laughs> I try. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. Just ahead, we'll go back up to Ed O'Brien in the Sky Center for an update on any late-breaking news. And ahead, the group is called the North American Man-Boy Lovers Association. Now, if the name shocks you, wait till you hear what Mike Gallagher has found out next. And the number one reason to stay tuned after new at 11, Dave. Coming right up only on the New Center 6 WRGB. If it's on your mind, he's your man. WGY's Mike Gallagher is next only on New Center 6, new at 11. There are hundreds of not-for-profit organizations in New York that raise money for great causes. But tonight, Mike Gallagher says the latest organization on the list is a disgrace. I didn't think anything was more disgusting or revolting than the North American Man-Boy Love Association, usually known as NAMBLA. I never thought anything could come along that could turn my stomach more than this group of filthy perverts, an organization that encourages sexual relations between adult men and young boys. But there is something even worse than the presence of this group, the fact that the state of New York has apparently approved NAMBLA as a legitimate not-for-profit organization that may now receive charitable donations and taxpayer-financed grants. Now, I won't turn your stomach any more than I have to with the details of how this fiasco has come to be. But a series of events has taken place in New York that, according to some assembly members, could allow NAMBLA to get this kind of tax-exempt status. Thankfully, a pair of Republican assemblymen promised today to do everything they can to fight this attempt. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that these sickos ought to be locked up in jail for promoting child molestation. If it's true that New York has made this group legitimate, somebody in state government should be fired. As always, we welcome your feedback to the Gallagher Commentary. Write to me, Mike Gallagher, care of New Center 6, 1400 Balltown Road, Box 1400, Schenectady, New York, 12301-1400.
Let's go to the Sky Center now for a last check on what's happening tonight. Ed? Joanne, a Troy police officer suffered a broken finger trying to make a drug bust tonight. It was about 8 o'clock. He saw the deal going down at Middleburg and 9th, got out of the car, cuffed one of the two men there. The other one made a break for it. Backups arrived, but a scuffle broke out then. They have them both in custody now. They're charged with possession and the one with resisting arrest. Kelly? And looks like we'll need the umbrellas for tomorrow. It will also be more humid. Checking first forecast, 67 at 8 a.m., perhaps a few sprinkles, 74 by noon with some showers around, and we could even see a thunderstorm late in the day with highs in the upper 70s. Golf ball hitting tomorrow, I guess. No mm. practicing of those putts. I wouldn't say so. All right, thank you, Kelly. And that's it for us tonight. That's new at 11. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Late Show with Letterman is next. Have a great night, and we hope to see you tomorrow. Good night.